Welcome back to Lessons in Product Management. I'm your host, John Fontenot, and I have an exciting episode lined up for you. Ajit Guman, head of product marketing at Navarre and author of Price to Scale, came on the pod to share the secrets of pricing strategy that he's learned and how pricing differs from startups to the enterprise. And product management plays a big role in pricing, whether you feel like you should or not. And Ajit beautifully breaks down that relationship between the PM and the PMM and how we can work together to determine our pricing. I've heard for too long that pricing strategies are nothing more than shooting in the dark, making a best guess, or simply piggybacking off of competitors. Ajit destroys all of those theories and sheds light on what proper pricing really looks like. This is Lessons in Product Management. Let's get started. Hey, Ajit, welcome to the podcast. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, the topic of pricing is, is such an interesting one, and I know our listeners are, are super interested to dive in. But before we do, could, could we kick off by just giving a, an introduction of yourself, your background, and, and what you're doing today? Yes, for sure. So, uh, you know, my name is Ajit. I'm, uh, we, today we're talking about pricing. My day job is running product marketing for a company called Narvar. So Narvar is a customer engagement platform for post-purchase retail and e-commerce experiences. I've been in the Valley for about uh, 12 years now, 10 years uh, working in different Valley companies. This is my fifth startup. I've been in other companies such as Medallia, HelpShift, uh, and FeedZai before. Mostly have been in the CRM and customer experience space. Very cool. So, so working in so many startups, I'm sure the, the pricing conversation has come up quite a bit. Um, have, have they all been uh, SaaS-based companies or, or have the... Yeah. Yeah, all of them have been SaaS based. Pricing has, I would say, uh, earlier on in my career has been was a harder topic, and it was a topic that everybody kind of pointed to each other and said, "Well, we don't know. We're not very sure about how to do this," uh, and that's really the reason why I wanted to figure it out because uh, my hypothesis going in was it it wouldn't be as hard as it 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 sounds like, and it wasn't. That's so interesting because I feel like. Pricing is one of those topics that is just so like controversial and so maybe not controversial, but just kind of like a, a black hole, so to speak, where right. a lot of people are still spinning their wheels trying to figure it out. And it seems like you, you landed on something pretty solid. So um, could, could we just dive in and, and go like maybe the backstory of your hypothesis and how you went about proving that out? Yeah, yeah, happy to do so. So, you know, I what I've noticed in the market is there is a lot of demand for consulting work for pricing. There are consultants, they charge quite a lot of money. The It's not as if they don't know pricing, right? These guys are very experienced. They've been doing it for a while. But the thing is that the organizations, the issue is that the organizations sort of throw their hands up sometimes and say, we don't know how to deal with it. But the thing is that... Um, it, they, the organizations intimately know their customers and they intimately are aware of their positioning in the market. And at the end of the day, the truth of pricing is that pricing really is about positioning. Uh, there are some mechanics to it, but the, it starts from the positioning. So the the example I like to start with is, you know, you, you've seen the, seen the movie Wolf of Wall Street and there's a scene in which Matthew McConaughey is talking to uh the other lead actor I'm forgetting his name but basically he's like oh this is all a fugazi you know it's uh it's a fairy it's pixie dust it's not real it's sort of like that with pricing in the sense that price thing is based on value that exists in the buyer's mind and everything we do in marketing or in product marketing to establish the value in the buyer's mind then helps us justify the price. So the act of pricing is really a way of communicating and justifying the price based on the value that they are perceiving. And so there is some methods and techniques to that, but that truth is very helpful uh, to know. And also for organizations then to be confident that they understand what the value is because they do. And most of the times when you offload and outsource this activity, uh, this fundamental piece of knowledge sort of gets lost. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And um, I, I think you're, you're spot on that most companies do try to outsource this because it, it, it does seem so like challenging and, and such a gray area. But I'm curious because I know you've mentioned product marketing a few times. And I think in any like undergrad marketing class, you're going to hear about the, the marketing mix of pricing, product, promotion in place. 
and and being in product i'm, I'm always curious like wh where's the overlap in, in product management and product marketing when it comes to uncovering pricing do you have, do you have any thoughts around that yeah, so the overlap really is on the strategy and positioning and even to an extent uh, uh, packaging side. So I, I, I use a three pronged framework. So positioning, packaging and pricing specifically, uh, even before that is the strategy, right? So the product manager knows why they're building the product. What, what was the problem that they were trying to solve? And in that, that speaks a little bit to the strategy as well as the positioning, right? Positioning is why you're solving it and how you're doing it better than competitors. If that clarity is there, when in earlier on in a product release process, one can easily say, well, this is how we're going to deliver value. That then informs packaging because packaging involves things like naming, or if we say, X product is only for enterprise customers in one segment, let's say healthcare segment, then we will build it into the healthcare package. And if it is driving value for them, that helps us justify a higher price point. So that's why uh, that's the handoff period point between like product management and product marketing. Then product marketing gets it like, okay, I'll figure out a nice name. I'll figure out how to price appropriately for this. I now understand which segment we're going after and I'll try to get the value you know if you're delivering value i'll try to get our money's worth for it uh and, and so that's why i feel like prod, building a nice cadence between product management and product marketing is super helpful in making sure we get the most bang for a buck for our products yeah i completely agree and and i don't know how how widely known this this framework or theory is becoming like outside of product and i think a lot of product managers like think it's just a product thing but like jobs to be done right like Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine that the value that's perceived from the customer aligns really well with the job that they're trying to get done. Mm -hmm. And so like having, Absolutely. having product and product marketing kind of set that context and what is the job and what are they hiring your product to actually do helps inform that value piece of, of the pricing puzzle. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things we do in packaging is we map out all of the features and we try to map features to use cases which is similar to jobs to be done. And when you do that, you can know what is this set of features that solve a particular problem that is tied to a particular value. And then you can start nesting those modules within a package. And that's how the customer says, well, okay, I see, I can see based on the package that you're presenting to me that you're going to solve four of my main problems. Right. And so that's why uh, that, that exactly that jobs to be done and use case definition becomes so helpful. Awesome. And so I know a lot of times people will look at competitors and say, based on our feature set, you know, we're, we're more rich than this competitor or we're sub part of this competitor. So let's price according to how we feel like we stack up against competitors. But what is your thought around like competitive based pricing? So the, the, I would resist the urge to do this. And the only cases where this even makes somewhat sense is maybe you are the next best competitor to the leading brand in the market. In most cases, uh, there is sufficient differentiation between companies. And if there isn't, I would say the differentiation would be a cause for worry. Uh, we need uh, it's our job to ensure that there is product differentiation. Now, if it exists, then there will always be some variation between a competitor's customer segment and yours, what they're looking for the product and yours. So there's going to be that variation. And that may result in totally different pricing structures. So it's not even the price point, right? Before the price point is the packages we create. It's the pricing metric that we set. It's the pricing structures. We may be at a different company stage. The competitor may be at a established stage. We may be growing. So we may set a pricing uh, structure that is more linear, that offloads risk for the customer. So there's so many considerations there that making it about the competitor uh, is almost in many cases, almost the worst decision to be made. Um, and it's only made in rare cases when you've out, you know, you've looked at every other thing and the only other thing left is, is okay, you have very matching products. We have very similar go-to-market motions. Now you may want to look at price as the last straw, but it is the last straw. Like competitive pricing is the last thing. Yeah, you mentioned several things there around like, 
positioning and what's your value and what are you actually trying to accomplish as a business and put it in your context and your situation. I would assume that that's why you started with, with strategy and kind of anchoring that pricing discussion back to strategy exactly. being the first thing. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, I run the pricing channel on this com- revenue leadership community called Revenue Collective. And the other day we got a question about uh, somebody asking, hey, you know, my competition just lowered pricing a lot. And uh, everybody, basically, the feedback was unanimous. Don't reduce your prices because competitors are doing so. That's, in most cases, a trap. And uh, the one expert I really follow in the pricing world is a VC. His name is Tom Tungus. And he has made really some great blogs on the topic. And one of the things he talks about is price is actually some uh, software is a web lend good. And that what that means is, enterprises and bigger enterprises will value your product more sometimes when the price is higher. So if you're going to, let's say, sell in financial services and you're selling your software as you would price it for SMB retail, they're kind of going to balk at it and not even consider it like a serious software because they're used to seeing software prices and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it really may be the same software, but they're not going to even consider it properly until it's that expensive. So there are there are some some mysterious forces in the pricing world that that also come into play. For sure. And so you wrote a book on pricing recently. Yes. And, yes. And I'm, I'm really curious if you could talk about that, like um, maybe the the impetus for, for writing the book, and if one of the listeners wants to pick it up, what, what could they expect from it? Yeah. So I when I started my own efforts at pricing. Uh, here at Narwar and even before that, I couldn't really find an easy practical dummies guide, right? There is no dummies guide on pricing. Unfortunately, the dummies word was taken, so I couldn't use that, but it's really that. Um, I spoke with nine pricing experts in the Valley uh, from who worked at different companies like Gainsight, Nosto, Citrix. So I learned a lot from them. Their case studies are also included. And the reason I've written it this way is I've made the process very simple. Like it's like follow these steps to figure out what are the main decisions that you have to solve for. And now you can read about how all of these companies in Silicon Valley, you know, I have at least 10 plus case studies in there of how they solve. This is what I wanted to read. So that's the book I wrote because I couldn't, I found a lot of theoretical literature, uh, like MBA literature about how to do point joint analysis. I found a lot of, uh, for lack of a better word, clickbaity type of blogs that says, here are the 10 strategies, right? Uh, Or here are the seven plus strategies. And it's just like these names without any more help in figuring out what what to do. And it let, it like confused me so much that I just wanted to uh, write something that was easy, clear, not confusing. I love that. And I love books that take you from from theory into practice. That way you can read something, (laughs) digest it, and actually go implement it and experiment with it. So I love that you did that. Uh, What's the name of the book and and where can people find it? The book's name is Price to Scale. So if you search for uh, Price to Scale and uh, just say book, because if you otherwise just search for that, you'll find scales. So search for Price to Scale book on Amazon. I just published it last week. Oh, wow. Congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm sure the uh, the response on that's going to be great, and and I hope that uh, the listeners go pick up a copy, especially if you're involved at all or, or can help influence the pricing conversation. Appreciate um, it, John. Appreciate it. Yeah, but before we go, I did I did have one last question for you. Um, I know you said you've worked in in the startup environment for for a lot of your career, and I'm just curious, like, what are the the different pricing concerns that that you've seen from like startup world versus maybe mm-hmm like an established enterprise? Yeah, that's a very good question. So startups are, earlier on, they're a little gun shy of increasing price because their brand hasn't been built. And when a startup is really small, they're trying to provide pricing options that reduce risk for customers. So you'll see them trying to figure out how to provide some sort of pay-as-you-go model that just gets the customer interested to try it. So that's what you'll see at really small companies. Then as you see companies grow a little bit more, they'll say, well, now we want more revenue predictability. So their pricing structures may change. They may want like, just like a cell phone plan, right? They they sell you five GB for 70 bucks or something like that. 
Uh, so it's like a fixed model. You, it's a minimum pain. So startups will experiment with those sort of models while keeping the same pricing metric. What, the other thing that happens after this point is skews increase. They, most companies will have a larger product portfolio. And as they become more like pre, post IPO companies, what would have happened if they would have had 10, 15 SKUs, it would, the complexity would have increased a lot. And then they have to do some sort of a trimming down exercise again, because the increase in SKUs would have led to a reduce in sale, reduction in sales efficiency. So there's sort of this push and pull that happens on pricing along as the company grows. You come up, there is, the duality between less complexity and more complexity uh, to account for different phases in the company growth. And you'll, you'll see this when you even read the book because uh, you'll see some of this dynamic happening in bigger companies who are trying to go back to a simpler model and then smaller companies who are trying to go back to a more complex model to get more revenue predictability. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm going to pick up my copy knowing that it's launched now. And so if, if you're driving, uh, don't try to get on Amazon on your phone right now, pull over or wait till you get to a stopping point and, and, and get price to scale uh, book, search that in Amazon uh, from for Ajit Guman and, uh, and enjoy the read. I know I will. So uh, Ajit, thanks for coming on and, and sharing. I'm, I'm excited to read it and uh, glad to be connected. Thank you, John. Appreciate the time. Whether you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. And if you're not subscribed on the Path to Product YouTube channel, please do as I'll be rolling out content specific to YouTube that won't be on the audio podcast. You can catch the link to the channel in the show notes. And as always, thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you next time on Lessons in Product Management.